I started working in the trade union movement, there was a need to, to, to set up classes and we were every evening running classes. So one that then began to think about how does one use slide tape presentations. I bought myself a camera and started experimenting with it. That was in 1975. My photography went hand in hand with my political work, my trade union work. So I was all the time involved in political organizations at local levels. And uh, that led to me carrying my camera, photographing what was happening around me. And then those photographs were being used in local publications for the political movement. I was very lucky. That's how I started photography. My interest as a political activist and, uh, was to document what was happening. So it became natural that I would photograph events unlike photojournalists who would come in, photograph uh, a sort of iconic moment and move away and then have it published in the newspaper. I saw myself working differently. I saw myself as not just taking pictures of events, but also using it as a way of creating a story, uh, creating a set of documents. You must remember that as uh, South African, black South Africans, uh, we were represented differently by the mainstream media. Mainstream media never covered us or life in the black community. And if they did, they covered it in a very uh, negative way. I was from a very young age, from the time I was in high school, I was a political activist, a student activist, at a time where any form of political expression was was suppressed by the state. So you either got banned, you got arrested, or you, you were thrown into jail. Political organizations, I was also active in the women's movement, if you want to believe that. Women becomes always the, the mother or the, the women in my work are very central. We were equal partners. Each one of these photographs have a, a lot of meaning for me. You have a photograph of Victoria Mkenge. I worked very closely with her. Uh, she was a very strong woman. Uh, her husband was also a comrade of mine who was assassinated. And she herself got assassinated. So these photographs now have a new meaning for me and uh, for historically now. It's a picture of the funeral. That's a story for me. A young, very young student comes to work with me in my dark room. And we become very close friends. A year later, him and another comrade comes into the country and then they are attacked by the police. There's a battle in which he is killed. So for me, that photograph represents so much. In South Africa, we lived under a, a, a very, very repressive state. And a repressive state uses every avenue to suppress news and the taking of news, you know, I mean, photographs. And so <clears throat> photography was also, and photographers become a target, especially in like in my case, who have a political background, when the police act, they come for you first. We were also very cautious that the struggle is not made up of one leader. The struggle is made up of the masses. Uh, they are as important as, in fact, you are only a leader because of them. Some people today look at it and say, but you were very critical 
of the leaders of this? I, then I would say yes. Uh, we, will, we should always be critical and not become too dependent on them. No matter who wins the new ANC elections, we can't stop. We need to democratize the, the political organizations. We need to make leadership accountable. We need to train and make young people understand that democracy is a very fragile thing and that you, con you have to continuously assert yourself to, to strengthen democracy. Otherwise, you lose control. <laughs> Thank you.